us being home so much the past year and a half, many of us have turned to furry friends to keep us company, which in turn means places like Hamilton Region Emergency Veterinary Clinic. Did I get it? You got it. I got it! <laughs> are so much busier. So that's what we're visiting today. Brand new space. Welcome in, everybody. Nice to meet you, Tabitha. Thank how are you? you? Thanks for having us. This is exciting. It is okay. exciting. So how much bigger is this space than your than your old one? Oh, it's so much bigger. We are coming from 1,800 square feet to this location, which is 5,400 square feet. Oh, okay. Huge difference. So in this past year and a half, how busy have you become? <laughs> it has been incredible. Yeah. Um, our clinic, like every other emergency clinic in Ontario, and I'm sure globally, has exploded. Uh, we're averaging anywhere between 40 and 60 cases every single day. Are you the only emergency clinic in Hamilton? Yes, so we are the only 24-hour emergency only clinic. Uh, there are clinics that are open later. Uh, there are you know, clinics that are open overnight, but we are the only true emergency hospital for Can animals. Can we take a walk to the back? Yeah. Obviously there's, there's patients back there now that, there we're, not, that we're not going to show, right? Yes. Um, but we do have many staff pets We have here. lots of pets Yay! to see. Okay, so let's come, come back because the difference between you, Tabitha, an emergency vet clinic and taking your pet just to your regular vet is what? So the difference is we don't get to see the cute wellness routine appointments, the vaccine appointments. We get to see the, the not so great things. We get to see some of the, the not happy pets um, and we get to fix them. Right. And we have one happy pet here. Yes. This is Matt. Morning, Matt. How are you? This is Shia. She, she, hi, Shia. Oh, yes. You want to say hello to everybody, don't you? Shia is so friendly. Yeah. Outstanding. She, uh, so, I guess people can't come in, right? No. The, there's a whole new kind of setup. Yes. So, with COVID, uh, we are still curbside. Uh, so, clients are going to call ahead. They're going to let us know they're coming, what's going on. We're going to take all of that information. And when they arrive, they're going to call us. We're going to bring the animal into the, the, the hospital to examine and figure out what's going on. Um, that how stresses is, a lot of people say, how out. How is that? Because they don't get to see where their pet, That's right. their pet goes. That's right. So people are, you know, now in a stressful situation where their pet's sick, their pet's hurt, they don't know what's going on, and now they can't see them. So this is this is where they come. Well, I think today's an opportunity too, because listen, you're very busy. Yes. Right. Yes. Sound like you need more, <laughs> um, more customers or patients. But I think we just want to show people some of the friendly faces like Matt yes. and so many other people yes. here because how big's the staff? Uh, we're a team of 70. Goodness. 70. Right. Yes. So a year ago, a year and a half ago, pre-print pandemic, we were a team of 17. Right. Um, so we have grown to 70, uh, which is crazy. Uh-oh. You know yep. what? Crazy, crazy. This is There's Lily. another friend. Lily. This is another friend. Lily. Hi, Lily. Lily is another pet friend that we're going to hopefully meet at some point today. Hi, you Lily. Have, you have some things to teach me too, right? I we're going to burrito a cat. Yes. We're going to check for my microchips and so many other things. Hi, sweetie. Hi, darling. And we'll get to meet uh, Lily and, and a few other friends. We come Thanks. back to, let me get it, Hamilton Region Emergency Veterinary Clinic. Yay. Got it. HREVC. HREVC <laughs> on Morning Live. Let's see your beautiful face, darling. There you go. Morning, everybody. <laughs> Welcome back to the Hamilton Region Emergency Veterinary Clinic. It's super long. I know. So it's easier to say. <laughs> H-R-E-V-C. Hey, it's Tabitha, everybody. We're back with Tabitha, who is ex super excited to be on TV. So she excited. was so nervous. You're so great. I am so nervous. You're great. <laughs> I know. Luke can be intimidating, but it's okay. He really is. Okay, so we have really Shia, is. Matt's uh, dog, yes. because we don't want to be showing any patients, right? Because right? Right. There, there is some situations here. But we, a, a very important thing is chipping your pet. Yes, so important. Nobody wants to be in a situation where their pet runs away. It gets out of the gate. It gets out of the house and you're not chipped and you can't find that, that animal. So if your, your animal is chipped and it comes to a veterinary clinic, we can scan it and your information will pop up and we can get it back to you safe. Can we, can we show where, this, where the chip is on, on Shia, Matt? Uh, usually in between the shoulder blades. Sometimes it can travel down, but typically Maybe. it's in between the shoulder blades right here. And when do, we, when do you put a chip in your pet? You can put it in any time, really. Right. But it's usually easier when or spay them because then it's quicker. Okay. So let's let's check and see what the the, the chip is. Would you know, Tabitha? Would you know the 
Like the percentage of like how many pets would be chipped? Or it's any, it's any, any high pets that, that are not chipped. They're not chipped. They're not chipped. Why, why, why is it? Is it, is it expensive? It's, like, it, not really. Not in comparison to, you know, losing your pet and not knowing where right. it went. That's why it's a good time, like Matt said, to when it's spayed or neutered to right. do it, to put it in there. Because, okay, so did the, so the number came up right there. So that number is there. So yes. So what do you do with that number there? So what's going to happen is we're very involved in uh, community projects. So we deal with uh, the SBCA and the, the street cat program. Uh, we have the city of Hamilton contract. So we're you know working with animal control. So when we have an animal that's brought in and it's lost or you know maybe it's a, a stray, right. we can chip it and that number is going to come up, which gives us access to a database. Uh, that will tell Plug us that, that in to see who the That's owner right. is. And then we can call them and say, hey, we found your pet, okay. which um, is happy. Yeah, like, like Lily. 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 Can we let Lily out? Lily wants to come play. Can we, can we let Lily out? Because we, we, we promised, who's Lily's? Is Lily's can you, can Lily. you let Lily out just so, to say hello to everybody? Uh, yes, on cam on camera? camera? We don't have any other dogs that we're good. Oh, because yeah. well, she is, she's, she's yeah. can we do it right now on camera? Yeah. Yeah, let's we're because we bring Lily out to Because we just want we just want Lily to say hello to everybody because we had Lily behind the glass before. Hi Lily, she just seems so excited to come out and say hello. Hi, Hi Lily. Okay, well we have we've been showing some tons of dog love. We have to show some cat love when we come back to the Hamilton Region Emergency Veterinary Clinic on Morning Live. <laughs> we're meeting some new friends this morning. This is Pepper. Pepper, you want to say hello? I know, Pepper's not a morning person. <laughs> or is she? Ashley, is she a morning person? No. No. <laughs> right? But we, we had uh, a lot of dog love. By the way, we're at the Hamilton Region Emergency Veterinary Clinic, back with Tabitha. Um, so we're focusing on, we tackled some dog stuff. Yes. Cats yes, are did. so important here too. Yes, they are. I should say, you, you, you don't do any um, exotics. We do no exotics. Not usually. Okay. Um, as a rule, we're, we're no exotics. Uh, strictly cats and dogs, uh, you know, the occasional thing, depending on the doctor that's in, we may be able to accommodate it, but as a rule, it's, it's strictly cats and dogs. Okay. When it comes to cats, how do you calm them down? Because this is Ashley's cat, it right? It is so Pepper's, Ashley's cat. Pepper's calm with Ashley, but I'm assuming if there's a cat coming in here with issues, because that's why they're here, how do you calm them? So cats don't like us. Despite what we like to believe, cats don't like people. Um, and they're very nervous. So, you know, we want to make sure that they feel safe, that they feel not threatened. So we do a technique that is very helpful in handling cats and it's called burritoing. Well, well do you think uh, Ashley would Pepper do a burrito? Absolutely. Yeah, let's, let's, let's show the burrito. It's, it's kind of like uh, with a child. So we're, yeah, we're swaddling a baby basically. Uh, we're, you know, getting all of their limbs in there and making them nice and snug so that they feel safe. Um, and that's going to help us to handle them and examine them to figure out what's wrong. Go for it, go for it, Ashley, just to, to show us. Because um, we have another friend too that we want to meet. That's, uh, that's Lucy over there. Yeah. And we're going to get to know Lucy a little bit too. Hi. But what is free, what's it called, Tabitha? So we practice fear free, fear -free. and uh, cat friendly techniques here. Um, we are not a fear free certified. I said it again anyway, Certifi certified, certified, certified yeah, hospital, it. but a lot of our team does have fear-free uh, handling certifications. So this is just going to help us make Pepper feel very comfortable. How are you feeling, darling? She's not going to squirm out of there, and we're going to be able to help her feel better in okay. a situation where she needs that. We have Lucy over here along um, with, oh, good girl, Pepper. Chelsea, Kelsey, Kelsey. <laughs> okay. What's special about Lucy, uh, Tabitha? So Lucy uh, came to us needing uh, some work on her leg. Um, Lucy she's a tripod. Is, she is a, a rescue for right. Kelsey. Kelsey's rescued this one. And uh, Lucy is now a tripod. So the color we have is so uh, taken Lucy's leg just to make her feel better. Uh, that's one of the things that we have the ability to do here, and Lucy is obviously feeling great and so grateful. Yeah, 
Wonderful. OK, let's take another break. Because what we're doing is we, we never, this is a hospital. It you is never a hospital. know what's going to be coming through know. the doors. That's like right. every day is different. So if something does come through the doors, we got to get out of here. But we have one more segment that we want to do. And we want to calm your nerves at home. If, you're, if your pet does have some issues, let's talk them through different things that they can do to calm themselves. Yes, even important. More, even more than the pet. When yeah, we come back super important. to the Hamilton Region Emergency Veterinary Clinic on Morning Live. Hey, morning, everybody. Welcome back to the HREVC. <laughs> I met a new friend. This is Alicia's dog. Hey, Alicia. Hi, how's it going? Hey, so who's this? This is Tyson. This is Tyson. So this is your dog. This is my dog, yep. Okay. He's so, a nine-year-old boxer. Amazing. Yeah. So I just want to tell everybody, so we've actually moved locations because this is a world <coughs> hospital. Yes, yes, And there was, a, um, there was a situation when happened with an emergency yep. dog. Shh. Come on, buddy, you want out too? <laughs> Does he want out? You can let him out, yeah. yeah he <laughs> out. Um, so we, we kind of had to leave from, who's this guy? That's Chewy. Hi, Chewy. Hi, that's He's Luke. Also, yeah. Because <laughs> um, it's a working hospital, right? There's yes. always stuff happening. Yes, there is, yeah. So you never know, um, with it being a 24 hour clinic, you never know when something can come through the door and it can be as simple as my dog has an ear infection to something as critical as my dog can't breathe. Okay. Um, what are you so seeing a lot of right now, down the end of the summer? Right now we're seeing a lot of heat stroke. Um, so believe it or not, um, even when you think like the sun's not out and it's not too bad, um, dogs can overheat really quickly. So dogs that overheat really fast, anything with a lot of thick fur, overweight dogs, or even these guys. So any dog with a sh uh, short snout is called a brachiocephalic. So that means they have a really long, soft palate. The only way dogs can cool themselves is by panting. Okay, so that's how they cool themselves. And if they can't, with this brachiocephalic, with the long soft palate, they can't cool themselves as quickly as like, let's say a Labrador can. Okay. So they can overheat really fast. And what happens when they actually overheat is that stuff can happen in their body and they can go into shock as well. So it's very, very critical. So it's so, to be always having water out for them in, the, in these summer so days? So that's not even enough sometimes. So when it's super hot, like it was uh, this week, reaching those 40 degree temperatures, you don't even want your dog to run in the backyard for two minutes. You want to take these guys especially out on a leash and then bring them right back into that AC. If you don't right. have AC in the house with a fan on them and trying to keep them as calm as possible because it's surprising how fast they can, they can overheat. Mm -hmm. So a normal temperature for a dog, a high normal would be about 38.5 degrees Celsius. Usually when we see them come in in heat stroke, they're up above 40, usually 40.5 degrees. Why do you love to be a technician? So I love being a technician. You get to meet so many new people, um, and you just get to help these guys out. Yeah. You know, they can't it's speak. It's gonna be tough to you take work home with you sometimes because I don't know. So it's I've been hard. doing it for a number of years now, and I have. You can sometimes. Um, I've gone. Not gonna lie, I've been to to counseling and stuff to help not take work home, yeah. uh, because you know you do see the really healthy ones and great owners, and then sometimes you have not so healthy animals and you know people do their best that they can but maybe they can't afford you know the gold standard treatment um, and unfortunately that has to be the the end of of time for that animal and even just old older senior animals um, but sometimes that can be nice for them as well because that's yeah. the last thing we can give them is to take them away from that Boy. that pain yeah. <laughs> well the goal for us today was to come and show off the new space because yeah. we want to remind everybody there's a new space so it's yeah. right uh, it's right on Dundurn <laughs> King, right beside Fortino's. Um, and just, just to show the love that you guys give. Yeah. Right? Because they're dropping them off and they don't know what happens in here. No, right? they don't. So that's what you just want to assure them, that you're giving them all the love and friendship and companionship <laughs> and, and healing, right? Yeah, uh, and that's the hard part too because you can't see what's going on back here. Yeah. Right? And, you know, like we just had a, a dog come in that could hardly breathe. So yeah. we had to move spots, come back here. And okay. unfortunately, it's like these guys that are more stable right now that just came yeah. in for some blood work, they're, they're going to have to wait. Right. <laughs> okay, you want to you get Luke? Sick Luke. <laughs> Alicia, like, great meeting like, no. you. Yes, okay, you. Thank you too. for all the work that you do. Yeah. It's a really, really important spot in the city of Hamilton. Say hi, buddy. Hi, guys. Hello. 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 Hello.